counter you can get. Yeah. Can't really yeah, show yeah. on the lane. Just yeah. TP into fog, summon the tree, and then go back to the forest. Yeah, this would be the time to pick it. Otherwise, it's 100% getting banned, I would assume. Uh, he slipped through in a couple of drafts, but I do agree with you. I think it could work well here. And this is the first Night Stalker, right? I believe so. We've talked about him a lot. We have seen him banned out a number of times, but oh my. I think this is the first time he's been picked. Going back to the Visage. Worked so well. And believe it or not, Viper has actually gotten through as well, meaning has not been banned as of yet. Didn't work last game. I mean, it worked early game. That's for sure. And Viper has mana problems later oh on. Oh, yeah. He just carries like eight mana and mana pots at all times in his backpack. <laughs> Th See, that would be interesting to have an item that, like, what could you get from Mana Region that works on Viper? Is there anything that comes to mind that... Not a hell of a lot. I feel like there there, sh there needs to be a different build. For a the Bloodthorn? Like straight Bloodthorn. Straight blood. Uh, yeah. I don't know, anything worse. with Mana Region. I don't know, Veil seems uh, cool because of the Yeah, that's true. Veil, Veil, we did see Veil uh, the yeah. other day. We saw the Veil and then that level 10 uh, talent with the Spell Lamp. Yeah. Or spell uh, lifesteal, life rather. I'm sorry. Right. All right, so we see the Medusa and PL taken out. What about Caudal Wiper? Like, you use uh, Nether Toxin twice Ooh. with Chakra Magic? Yeah, that could now be that's okay. an interesting idea. Just fill the entire Roche Pit with yeah. Break? I mean, I'm assuming the Break, or not the Break, the Nether Toxin doesn't stack on itself, right? Yeah, but just, just throw it on a larger bigger area. Bigger area. Yeah. Yeah. So, so four of these heroes, uh, all Vision, Night Stalker, three ends from Nature's Prophet, Birds, Winter Vibrant, Fly. Yeah. Fanatic gravitating towards the birds, that's for sure. Nature's Prophet basically flies at 25. The no mana cost. Or, no, or the no, no cooldown. No, no cooldown, no cooldown on teleport. Yeah. And an invoker ban. We've only seen one invoker so far this event, and it was pretty underwhelming, to be mm. honest. Yeah, that's another hero I, I hope that comes back into the scene. It's very hard to balance, though. It's either way too OP or just not good, it feels like. Yeah, I would agree with that. I want to see Cataclysm. What do you think of that? Uh, it's really weird. I'm not sure how it works. I saw five Sun Strikes, what, two yeah, Sun so Strike on two the sun each strike head. Near you. It's two, not on two the target. Right, two Sun Strikes. So that's why I'm. So it can be used for vision. So it's two Sun Strikes that are randomly close to each hero. So there's 10 like how overall. Close? And they can, like, within 200 range or something. And they can see them. But. So the two scenarios I'm thinking of, one is for vision, like a Zeus ult or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the other one is if you're in a big team fight, it's actually going to be really hard to actually dodge around. Like if you have like three or four enemy heroes near each other. Yeah, if they're all clumped up, then yeah. it's just a big I mean, sea it, of it could be complete sunstrikes. garbage. I have no idea, but just, just theory crafting here. It's interesting, nonetheless. Well, Fnatic uh, pretty much sticking to their guns here. They won't be able to grab the same draft they had last time, but they grabbed the Earthshaker. Okay. Is this literally the exact same draft so far? Yeah, they won't be able to get the Medusa, though. It okay. was kind of the key part at the Is end. Is Clockwork still there? It looks like so. it. Yeah. Okay. See if they end up choosing that or not. They could fifth pick uh, an Envy hero, I suppose. Fair bit of mobility on the side of VP now. You've got the Blinking Quaff, the Fast Night Stalker, and the, the Teleporting Prophet. Have you guys seen the 25 for Queen? The Fear? Yeah, that's um, pretty interesting. You can just cancel the fight with one good Scream of Pain if they, yeah. if they go on you, on yeah. whoever, if you don't pop a BKB. Now, the way I look at it, when you blink in, like the biggest problem with, well, one issue is the other town's really good too. It's like a second Lincoln's, right? Yeah. Um, so you have to choose between that first. But if you go with the fear, you jump in, and the co-op's issue is kind of getting blown up once you've blinked in. But having 1.5 seconds of the team running away from you also sets up your sonic wave. Also sets so up your sonic wave so you can miss. <laughs> you can, when you miss, it is that much more awful, <laughs> and you'll be flamed. That is true. Yeah, but if they're running away from you, they run up the AOE. If you combine that with the new hero, Lacoste, he has a fear as well, or she has a fear as well. They can literally run back to the, the base at that point. It's like five or six seconds of oh running away. <laughs> ah, yes. The, the synergy is uncanny. Guys, Captain just in, in six months, you'll, you'll see that when that hero's in captain's mode. Always, always ahead of your time. Unless they delete one of her two ultimates. <laughs> Maybe that's an issue. She has two ultimates. Fanatic so what, what if you about play they want? Scylla Bear and Queen of Pain? Yeah, like triple th fear, <laughs> then Queen of Pain's <laughs> cooldown comes back online. Yeah. So it's like, just force <laughs> them back. I like it. I really like it. And Sniper with the new knockback. Oh, that one's terrible. Nobody's going to pick that up. Have you seen the new Assassinate? 
the one minus one point five. Yeah, seconds. so it's sort of one almost like an instant assassinate. It's I think it's pretty good actually. Really? So the other one's a hundred range, if I'm not mistaken. And at that point, like, how much does a hundred range mean? Like you have it's like seventeen hundred or not whatever. Much. Not much. So I'm surprised that Resolution didn't pick that up actually in their match. Not that it would have made a difference, but. But uh, it's, it's a Terra cool. Blade for Fnatic, a huh. comfort pick for Envy, okay. something uh, we have seen him run a number of times. We've also seen Envy take this hero into the mid lane. Uh, uh, traditionally, that's something that he's done. Don't know if it'll happen here, but something to keep in mind. I still want to see a Shadow Demon with a Terra Blade. Could it? They don't have too much to clear the illusions, besides Queen of Pain. Could it be possible here if you put the Earth Shaker on the three? Yeah, or just put Winter Wyvern on the three. Yeah. yeah, that could be interesting. They have decent clear for Terra Blade illusions right now. Nice talk of the only one not really contributing at all. Um, yeah. Shadow Shaman, like Shadow Shaman needs to be super like close. Get well, Fisher dies. In general, but yeah, that's true. All right, what does is, what is VP look for here in a carry? Something like a, a Juggernaut. I don't know, Ursa feels like two single target. Ooh, okay. our first the Tide Hunter of the event. Watermelon has returned. The big boy. Okay. So they got they have amazing team fight and yeah. counter initiation with Wyvern. I really like the team fight a lot. Uh, VP might be going for those towers a little bit more often than actual team fights this game. I do like the idea of the Juggernaut. Gives them some nice sustainability for the team fights. Any other know. carries coming to that. mind? Maybe it's maybe a Sven for Ramses. He can actually lock down Tide Hunter. Yeah, By lock down, I mean just jump on him with a BKB and right click him. Scary part is if um, well, the, if he has BKB, then it's fine. But the Wyvern against yeah. Sven is super scary. Just beat the crap out of your teammates. Yeah, and true. later on, Terrible just uh, rips apart Sven. Yeah. Hmm. This is a tough call. How's how's Necro? That's pretty good against TB. Fairly sustainable as well. I could see the Necro. He would go Diffusal, though, on TB. So mm. maybe not so that So you great. can't Diffuse anymore. Oh, that's yeah. right. You're right. What about... Uh, new changes. What the fuck Diffuse even means? Like, <laughs> can't Diffuse. <laughs> can't maybe can't Dispel. Is this still called Diffuse? I think so. Yeah. Can't Dispel anymore. That's yeah. right. Still Diffuses, just doesn't Dispel. For some oh, reason, what is, <laughs> That's true. what is a diffuse? Yeah. <laughs> it slows. It's, one it's right, the there, necro. Okay, necro. good. Okay. I like it. Like, Cold Embrace becomes a lot less effective when you have a Necro that can just Reaper Scythe somebody that's super low. Obviously, really good at killing Terra Blade that wants to get kind of low to be able to Sunder. Yeah, very natural counter Pretty there. Pretty good. And now that you can't diffuse it, I think, right. dispel it. <laughs> I think they really needed somebody with sustainability. I think that was the key thing. If it wasn't the Jug, the Necro makes a lot of sense because they... They need something to last in these team fights. Yeah, it's not. I, honestly, I'm gonna. I think VP is a better team, but I, I kind of like Fnatic's lineup a little bit more this time. I I'm gonna agree so with I'm you. So I'm gonna say VP is gonna win. Big team fight. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with Fnatic. I, I think this DJ Earthshaker is gonna gonna be a pain to deal with once again. I've got faith in the Envy Terrible. What do you think in Lacoste? Who's got this? I'll go with VP once again, even though I was wrong. Overall, a better team. I love the push. If they can just uh, pressure them, let's say between 15 and 25 minutes, they can do it. Also, I want to see Night Stalker. Yeah. Is he still that viable? Isn't Visage a hero that tends to be pretty good against like a split pushing Nature's Prophet? You've got familiars to scout things out, set up stuns, you can see over he his is, sprout. Yeah. Same goes for Winter Wyvern as well. He can't hide in sprout. Mm, that's a good point. All right. Well. Uh, looks like we'll have a quick pause as we load into this game, but uh, an exciting match. Fnatic could be on the cusp of an upset here with a 2-0, or maybe we could take this to an ace match and see what happens, but we're going to toss it over to our casters to hear what they think about this draft as we get into the game. Once more, it's Mott and Trent. Thanks so much, guys. We are in game number two. Game one, we saw great play from Pilot Dive from DJ and especially Ohio on that clockwork. Now we have him on a Tide Hunter. I believe our first of the tournament. And Trent, how do you feel about the Tide in the context of this Fnatic draft? Uh, there were a couple of those kind of historic Ohio heroes there heading into the end. They ban out the Batrider, one of his most famous ones. The Darkseer was still there, a classic combo with the Shaker and the Wyvern, but Tide is the answer they've gone for. So. Uh, looking to break himself free with the shackles of the Radiant here with the Kraken shell. 
pretty nice in that regard. Make sure you can actually get off his big ulti. Uh, and when you're working with so much team fight already, like before this pick, they already had the Wyvern, they had that Shaker, two big people who are looking to drop their ultis during these fights. Ravage really sets us up nicely. Uh, big, nice little frontliner for them as well, something that they were kind of missing on the side of VP, and they had to pick the Ramsey's Necrophos here last for that. Yeah. But you were talking about during the draft, you were surprised, I think, by the fact that they let the Wyvern through, especially maybe even the Visage as well. Yeah, I thought um, Visage was even more likely. Uh, it's just something that FNAC have been very successful on. Speaking of which, the Io was another big one for them, which they were picking a lot in the region, yep. and yet completely uh, unseen here so far in the first two. A little bit shocked by that. I thought maybe that would be their uh, idea to go with and maybe try it out here when they were up one game. But if it uh, ain't broke, don't fix it. So Visage it up again. Yeah, well, and then we will get back into the game. There were some sound issues. Looks like that's been taken care of. Envy, of course, we don't want to diminish or rather look away from what he did in that first game because he absolutely played phenomenally on that, uh, of course, that that great Medusa. Now he'll be on uh, the, the, the Terra Blade, so another hard farming hero, another hero that can take control of the game in the later stages. We thought it might be an anti-mage, but Terra Blade is going to be the choice for Envy here as they head down bottom aggressively over to the other side of the map. Yeah, one thing I was looking for in terms of these final picks as well for VP was just cooldown related stuff. Uh, right now, like they were already kind of locked into some longer ones here, just like the Winter's Curse at the 80, of course the Echo Slam, uh, getting down to the lowest at 110, and then they finished it off with a Tide Hunter as well. So overall, we're looking at kind of if they dump their whole load out here, it's going to be uh, a long time before they can fully be online again. Yeah. Um, Radiant side cooldowns aren't quite as bad, right? Uh, you do have the idea of playing around nighttime. That's one thing. So you kind of have to a timer in a sense on that. But um, Necrophos, maybe if he can eventually get into the Agon of Scepter, they can reduce that down by quite a bit. And then they don't really have too much to worry about here. So uh, pretty active across the map in terms of pickoffs. Looks like uh, Pasha, you know, we always have this consideration when it comes to Nature's Prophet. What are the item builds going to be? How can you make this hero work? Is it going to be the drums, the Shadow Blade? He's, uh, he's already just completely in there right now. The Orchid. Yeah, he's just, just ready to go. <laughs> just going to buy that thing straight. And a second pair of boots. Also yeah. queued up. Very yeah. important here. You gotta have two, one for each foot. He's feeling good about it. And, uh, the Orchid is along with the ride there. And we'll see if he changes it up. I'm, I'm sure he might, depending on how the game's gonna go. But the way the laning phase is shaping up, it looks to be an aggressive tri lane again from Fnatic. And I gotta say, the laning phase from Fnatic in the first game, it, it felt like that bottom lane was an absolute disaster from them. So hopefully things go a bit better here for Fnatic in this bottom lane than they did previously. Yeah, the thing about it too is that um, if you look at like what they had last game, it was the clockwork, right? Where uh, he was able to actually get a lot done once he had the level 6. I don't think Tidehunter is really going to be the same, so if you give so much space away this time, uh, I'm not sure you're going to really receive the same benefits out of that investment. The thing about Tidehunter though is that he does want to be really firm. You know, he wants to be like near the top of the, the gold chart here, but once again, Envy is getting the sack here. Forced down the off lane to try and recover away from there if he ends up a little under farmed. Yeah. Oh, we'll DJ might get a nice Fisher here, but eh, not able to capitalize. It's not completely no. blocked. Solo's going to walk around. He's fine. Would have been nice if he couldn't get the block off, but just trying to make some space for Ohio. So it's turned into a 2 1 2 for Fnatic. They are dual landing mid for Virtus Pro. Little is up and ready to go. So he's going to have some voids to throw out against Excalibur. They really want to stop him here. This is a much better matchup, I feel like, just because there's no break here to deal with for Excalibur. Like, the fact that he had to deal with that in the last game was kind of annoying. I don't know about the matchup in general, but. Should be better here, at the very least. Yeah, it's a bit odd to see the dual laning. Uh, could hurt them in the end, just because that first night time now is likely to be quite a bit weaker, unless they can actually get some kills here. And you can see Night Stalker, he only really has the attack to work with, and that's something that Excalibur can deal with with the, the Grave Chill. Relatively low cooldown at 16 seconds. A little force to try and come back in during that downtime to try and put out that harass, but overall, uh, it's just going to end up being a reduction of his own experience. Yeah. Absolutely. So he'll have to roam around elsewhere, try to find something. He's already doing that, going bottom. And uh, we'll see what they can get done. They also force out the rotation for Pile I Die. Arctic Firm will go, try and do some damage to No One and push him back. <laughs> no One, Outlast hitting Excalibur for now. Only two last hits for Excalibur, eight for No One, plus six to nine, which is huge when you think about it. The experience has been more even because of the fact that Lil was leeching that experience. But DJ, very low, solo, took. Gave him a lot of damage with his auto attacks, and the Void comes out. Lil comes in with a TP scroll, and DJ just finds himself in a rough spot and uh, giving away first blood there. Yeah, in there pretty deep. I guess he does get the bounty, but obviously not going to be worth it for a first blood situation like that. Nah, not at all. So, that will be a nice kill going the way of Virtus Pro. Of Ramsey's top lane getting nine last hits. 
And uh, it's going to be a one versus one bottom. Envy against the Nature's Prophet. So seven last hits for Pasha. Nine up for Envy. He should get more from than he did last game. He was pretty far behind at the beginning of the stages of the game. Should be a bit better here for Envy in the start of this game, I think. Yeah, a lot more opportunities for early aggression, too, from the side of Fnatic this game. Last time, not really any chances for that. Um, they had a couple early game pushes just because they were kind of counter-pushing uh, the big death ball that was coming out from VP. But uh, this time with the Metamorphosis, they could not only just counter and like kind of trade, they could actually get a building down and then still rotate in time to actually do something about a push from VP potentially. Yeah. Definitely looks more like a gank-oriented draft this time from the side of Virtus Pro. They're going to try and work and abuse that vision of the Night Stalker, try and get the global TPs from the Prophet, and then the high mobility of Queen of Pain all just kind of comboed up with Reaper Scythe to try and give yourselves a, an instant numbers advantage during these team fights. And has a couple nice pairings with that too, with the Shadow Shaman, one of the best nukers for a support can give uh, some high damage just to ensure the Scythe's going to go off. And then, of course, Scythe, one of those few things that can actually handle someone like the Tidehunter, right? You look towards, like, Static Storm, Doom, and then just Scythe to try and bring this guy down so that he can't be a big nuisance during team fights. Yeah, that's the Tide. We'll have to get his abilities off before that Reaper Scythe comes out. Hopefully, might have a tough time here for Ohio, but already playing pretty well in, these, in this series so far. Meanwhile, Lil, going to get caught by Pilot Die and Envy, but they're not going to chase him, it doesn't look like. It's nighttime, the movement speed comes out from Lil, he's fine. And maybe we'll see him make a move and then have the Nature's Prophet try to rotate in elsewhere and try to find a kill for now. Because it is the uh, first night, so. One thing we saw last game, too, which is kind of oh, interesting, was uh, Pilot Eye went for that 600 Night vision, uh, vision talent. And now in a game like this, you're actually up against a Night Stalker. So maybe a little unlikely to have too big of an impact just because uh, if a uh, Night Stalker is going to like win his game, by the time you get 15 on a Wyvern, perhaps it's a little bit too far gone. But if the game's still even at that point, that could actually be pretty uh, pretty huge for them because they really want to abuse that vision to find the Winter Wyvern and find that Earthshaker to stop them from making those big plays like they did last game. Yeah, that vision's going to be a crucial factor here as we get into five-minute mark. Nothing's really happened. We had the first blood against DJ. He just got caught out by the Shadow Shaman and the Night Stalker. Other than that, some heroes are kind of setting up mid. There's a ward scouting out Lil that's about to die, yeah. so Lil's going to see this They're waiting for him to die so they can go for this play from DJ. The, I think Lil's going to see the ward drop here in three seconds, and he's going to realize they know that he's there. And then, oh, maybe not. He's running in now, and there it is. The void's going to come out. Here's the arc burn. Lil already backs away. No one has to point out, so... Lil makes the instant reaction rotating away as soon as he goes for the Void. Nice play there. He knew it was a bait, and nothing comes of it from oh, his Oh, now two stalker. heroes come up these stairs, too, as DJ comes up. He didn't think it was worth it to go Whoa. for the Fisher. Void coming out. They have Shackles Fisher. It might save him, but the slow is there from the Night Stalker. He might actually be fine. Another Void in two seconds. The Nature's Prophet TP. They've got the Nature's Wrath as well. They're going to get one. They might get two. The Shackles will come in, and Pilai die will fall. It looks like Lil will help get the kill. A solo throws out the Aether Shock. No one looking for more, but... Excalibur is able to make it away in the meantime. And the picks of Nature's Prophet and Necrophos are so important here for your supports. They can do whatever. I mean, these are two very strong laners. They don't need a lot of assistance whatsoever. And yeah, you're able to just roam mid right at five minutes there. Help out your Night Stalker, who was going to have a little bit of a rougher nighttime. And now he's almost into that level four just because of those two kills mid. Yeah, it's huge. He needed that for sure. Where Getting aggressive twins? underneath the tier one, in between the tier one and the tier two, he'll find another bounty room. So, so far so good. You have the top CSer in Ramses in the top lane. And uh, of course you have the top three in net worth two across the board for Virtus Pro. Necro, Nature's Prophet, and of course no one is doing really well. Meanwhile, mid lane, Lil's gonna get caught with a Fisher, the Arctic Burn as well. They need more damage. They just don't have enough between these two heroes. Too tanky in the Night Stalker, he'll be able to make it away. Maybe go heal back up real quick. Yeah, if this game gets it, oh, look at this top lane. Yeah, yeah Envy's in Envy. trouble. Shackle's coming out, plenty of damage from the Nature's Prophet. Plus the Reaper Scythe there, that will get the kill. And that'll do it, Envy gonna be down for 20 seconds. So a lot of moves being made here from Virtus Pro already. Getting a lot of stuff in here in this first night time. Ideally, that's what you're going to see a lot of this game, Radiant is just trying to focus on Envy as fast as possible, attack. especially if we do even end up with like this double Orchid potential from the Queen of Pain and the Nature's Prophet. Just going to be looking to make sure he gets no Sunders off here. Mid lane, a Void coming out with the Crippling Fear, but Lil just trying to harass in this mid lane. Solo walking around, setting up, trying to maybe get a ward in between the towers. He'll drop it, but uh, the Creep Wave will spot him. That'll probably get D-Ward here in the near future. But... Uh, they're diving in. Lil looking for that a void. Nature's Wrath there. coming in. The Sonic Wave on to two. And the Dire Courier will fall. Plus the Shackles will get two kills. That is disastrous for Fnatic. And they might find more if they're not careful. You know, uh, die. that one does hit Couriers, actually. So yeah. 
able to snap them on down. Very nice ward in behind there, spotting it out, making an easy play for the Radiant and quickly turning that into a tier one. And what's happening on the other side of the maps while this is going on here? We have Ohio Radiant's really just kind of pushing it up top, can't really commit to anything, a little bit too risky. And bottom lane, in fact, it's actually Radiant pressure there as well. So big wins all around. That's a 5k lead there, not messing around this game. VP trying to put a show on here and just say, okay, yeah, you guys won game one, but we're the major winners here. Uh, Excalibur looks to be dead here. He's trying to man fight. It is daytime now. Ramsey's no Reapers available, but more than enough damage to get the kill. Lil is in some trouble. Envy's chasing him down, but the other side, Sprout comes in trying to make sure Pilot Eye can't chase Pasha down. Not enough damage to kill him. No one will pick up a DD. Maybe they try to fight this. Lil gonna get dropped down by Envy. Blinking away is no one, so it will be a one-for-one -one trade at the end of the day. And Fnatic finally get on the board with their first kill. But like you mentioned, a 6k net worth advantage for Virtus Pro, which is pretty gigantic at eight and a half minutes into the game. Yeah, and uh, obviously this is somewhat similar. Uh, it's a little bit more serious this game. They're a little bit further behind already, but I don't think they have the same potential, like the comeback stuff. They still have the big high ground defenders and everything. Uh, and I, I guess maybe it could happen, but you're not going to have that super invulnerable hero. Terrorblade is very scary in terms of the damage department, but he doesn't really get to that complete unkillable state, so it's a lot harder to make that kind of a comeback game work. Yeah. So, uh, probably going to have to look for some big plays out of this first Ravage here from Ohio, but who are his pairings to go with that, right? You have a, an Earthshaker that is not going to have as good of a game as last time. Highly doubt he'll have like a 16 or 17 minute Blink Dagger. No, it's... Uh Probably not happening this game. Jeez, Visage. It's not even into level 6 yet. No, he... I think no one's like 2 or 3 levels up on him right now at this point. Solo top lane, walking a little far up. He's going to get gushed, but it looks like he's fine. They're actually going to have 4 ultimates on the side of the Radiant. Before they have 2 on the side of the Dire right now. That's never a good sign, Trent. That's just simple math right yeah, there, my Solo's friend. just about to crack into the, the wards. Yeah, with Serpent Wards, now it gets easier to take down towers, and they already have the Nature's Prophet already. A four-step finished up for Ramses. He's got phase boots as well, looking for more. Pasha Dyer's trying to chase down Pylai Die, but he's going to get in behind the tower and towards, of course, his... Uh, oh, there's the Ravage up top, trying to solo kill on a solo. Mm, solo, solo, but he's not going to drop, not just yet anyway. It looks like he might be able to make an out. No, the Gush will come through, but that is a solo Ravage down for 140 yes. seconds. The solo, solo, solo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it does go down. Uh, maybe not the ideal first Ravage, but hey, it's the second kill of the game for them. No wards to come out, maybe pressure down this tower. It was a pretty real threat from the hero there. I mean, they're just taking whatever they can get at this point from Fnatic, which is not a whole lot. Uh, Ohio, again, top net worth hero in the game for, for Fnatic at this point. But uh, again, it's not like it was when he was on the... The, uh, the clockwork. It feels a bit different here. He's not able to make as many plays. He has this long cooldown ability. He can get one kill every so often, but at this point... Oh my god, this Visage is so poor. What? What's happening? Yeah. Uh, if I'm thinking about how this Tidehunter could be successful, I want a hero like a Bloodseeker or like a Sniper or someone who can actually abuse the fact that he's going to be bullying everyone, right? Where he's just like running ahead and forcing you to deal with him while there's someone pecking away. And in this game, that has to be Visage. That has to be the early game Excalibur with birds flying around Tidehunter, throwing out soul assumptions and dishing out damage that way. Uh, I don't think Envy's going to be tanking enough, really. I mean, it's going to be risky. Uh, but those are the kind of plays they're going to have to try and find, because right now they are losing this map very, very quickly. I mean, you got Snakes down bottom, you got Treants up top, and Lil just kind of sitting here with nighttime ready. Just like it's turning into a disaster. And there it is. The darkness will come out. Lil will fly over Ohio, who's swimming. The backstroke coming through. Envy TP's up with meta. Ramses needs to be careful. Great Sonic wave from Ramses. The Reapers, and Envy is done. And just as soon as he comes in, he comes right back out. Pilot Dye's going to throw up the Arthur Burn. Ohio getting chased down. This is already a disaster. They should find another kill. Blinken, body blocks there from no one. The Death Pulse will do the job. A double kill and a dominating spree for Ramses. The Sprout will come out. Lil will continue to chase Pilot Eye. He's in the tree line again. I feel like we've seen a lot of Pilot Eye in the tree line uh, today, but uh, the darkness, no, the hunter hello. in the night, and he's going to find him. Pilot Eye is like, not again. You've got to be kidding me. Lil will chase him down the void as if the Crippling Fear is there. Doesn't have the Cold Embrace or the Winter's Curse to save him. And a mega kill spree for Ramsey, and they'll work on this tier 2 tower. Oh, and look at this tree back here. Just getting out everything DJ wants to try and do, too. And I'm going to grab the wave, and there is no better hero to have in your team in these situations than Nature's Prophet. Instantly destroying a tier 2 so early on in the game. Side is TPing straight and he's going to get Crippling Feared. He has Ravage. He will not get the deny. It was close. Ravage is back up. Void will come through. And Ohio just cannot save his Tier 2 tower. Can't even deny it. But uh, he will force them back so they can't go high ground or anything along those lines. 
great execution by VP overall. I mean, they saw the solo Ravage being used up top, and I'm sure Solo just said, let's go. Like, it's, it's time to try and abuse that. We don't really have to worry about those same cooldown issues. Scythe has been back for quite a while at this point, and Pasha can just appear wherever he wants to all over the whole map, and uh, he's almost into that Orchid. And uh, this guy's just third on the list. We have a Veil and a Lincoln's coming out soon from no one. So the assistance from the Nature's Prophet just means that he can be the one to control up Envy. While well, you can just be try and feel a little bit safer with the Lincoln's and deal all kinds of damage with this Veil. And look at all the magic damage they have to stack on top of this too. The Prophet, Ulti, the Nuke from the Night Stalker, the Shadow Shaman, Necrophos. Excellent game here. It is looking rough for Fnatic, and I think that is an understatement. At 13 minutes into the game, it's a 9k lead for Virtus Pro, which is pretty ridiculous when you think about it. They're going to drop the server towards bottom. Another tier 1 will go the way of Virtus Pro. They get even more map control. And uh, Excalibur's just trying to be effective. But top lane, they've got the silence up under the Tidehunter. It's the crippling fear. No one has uh, already dropped the veil on him. The hood comes out. The body blocks again. I feel like I've seen this movie before. The Void will come in. Kraken Shell keeping him alive for now. The Shadow Strike in. The Courier will fall. Pasha gets another one. The Sprout comes out. He'll coin blade his way through. Ohio's backstroking, but he backstrokes right into a Sonic Wave and into his death at this point. Dead for 30 seconds. And uh, it just gets worse and worse for Fnatic as the game progresses. I mean, theoretically, that's actually a safer place to farm now than the past patch, right? Because that shrine is there, it's nearby. Maybe there could have been rotations, but that's just how far they are behind. Like, there was a chance he could have actually made it there and had some allies and some backup and some heals, but they just, they know they can't fight. They need items on these heroes. Uh, they need the mobility on DJ. Oh they need God. the levels on Pilot Eye. It's not even level six yet. Yeah. He, uh, he can't quite get there. Oh, he's That's so a close. level 8 Night Stalker he's to help this one. still not there, and he's going to die to the Orchid Burn. Oh, oh man. Dude, they, just, they just looked away. <laughs> he just, yeah. like, like the, the Sorens Urns got finish him. him off there. Like, yeah, at that damn. point, it's Dunzo. So it is rough. Meanwhile, they're going to find Envy in the top lane. The Reaper Scythe will come out and secure the kill there. Uh, well, I don't know, Trent. I really just don't know at this point for Fnatic. They, they just need some massive fight. Like, maybe when these drums come out onto Excalibur, if they can smoke up and find one target, there's still a chance. Um, yeah, maybe they dive too deep with a Ravage. If they put themselves in a bad position that allows DJ to capitalize, that kind of stuff can, can still turn around here. But this is not a situation where things have gone, like, according to plan or where you're looking to really fall back, I don't think. I mean, Ramsey at this point is almost on, uh, he's almost at Radiance. This is kind of like last Dying game on his Alchemist tower. almost. But. I mean, when you're looking at like 13k, 15 minutes, these are the kind of leads that you're, you're talking to below sing, you know, single digit percentages kind of a deal. Yeah, I think so. And this is before they've even take all, taken all the tier 2 towers in the bottom of the mid lane. So not, not only that, but Roche hasn't been taken yet. They haven't really pressured the tier 3 up in the top lane. There's still a lot to be done. But uh, Fnatic, like you mentioned, it, it is a very low percentage chance at this point in time. And now we're going to try and keep the ball rolling here. Go yeah, right into the Roche. With Serpent Wards drop too, they really want to get the sun quickly and move from there. And I just don't think there's any way that they Fnatic can deal with this. They don't have meta for another 15. Um, I will say, over there. if there's anything this draft is lacking from the Radiant, it is probably that counter-initiation stuff. So... If, uh, if one of them does get picked off, they don't really have a chance to keep, like, fighting into it. Like, they need some big play in the Queen of Pain. You can't, like, miss any of your spells. They All just right. need to make sure they keep executing. They're going to find Solo. He's going to actually get Ghost Scepter off. He has Ghost Scepter somehow. There's going to be a Ravage coming in, committed on no one. He does have an Aegis. They will get one. They'll get two now. So they get Solo on the back lines. Can they bring down no one twice? They've got the stun coming with the Enchant Totem, but the Fisher is too slow to follow up. And no one will be able to blink away just in time. So he somehow makes it away. And they get one kill out of that Ravage, and it's on a Shadow Shaman plus an Aegis from the Queen of Pain. Well, the Aegis is pretty nice, at the very least. Uh, and I still think they'll be able to get the Tier 2 more than likely here in the mid and probably the bottom two. It is, again, that Ravage just used on a single hero. I'm sure we'll try and find some sort of an abuse here. Top lane, DJ just barely surviving. The Urn's not going to tick him down enough. He's in the well, so he'll regen up just fine. But yeah, like you mentioned, I mean, it's... Ravage is down. It's go time. Yeah. There's no reason not to. Even without Serpent Wards, you can you can easily take probably both of these two towers at this point. Man, what a great Ghost Scepter game from Solo. That's, I mean, the birds, the Terror Blade, uh, perhaps even getting off a Four Winter's Curse. Yeah. He pretty much has one job, is just to walk up and drop wards. Obviously, Shackles and Hex and stuff like that. But if he gets wards when they're pushing, that's all he needs to do. And uh, stay alive with Ghost Scepter for sure. Radiance is now for Ramses. The Shadow Strike onto Ohio, just kind of sitting there. Ohio seems to be at least having some fun in this game, using the backstreet gone a lot, which is nice. But uh, it's not looking pretty good for him. He's still working. He just got Hood a little while ago. He's now got Neck Recipe. 
So he's going to have at least a few items coming in soon. I wonder if they'll dump snakes. Uh, on this tower, it's pretty low already. Yeah. So we're going to try and avoid it. Uh, they have the Prophet in the mid, too. All right, he's going to join down bottom. So this should be able to... No, okay. Well, if you can get a kill, yeah. sure. They got the Shackles. There's the Reapers coming out. That will get an easy kill. Now Rams is looking for more. The Courier dropped again. The mech was delivered as he got Reapered, which was unfortunate timing for Ohio. So he'll get dropped down. Wards were dropped to get the Tier 2. They're going to smoke and probably head in the mid lane now. Just try to take this down. Shadowblade picked up for the Nature's Prophet and... Firing on all cylinders over at his pro at a 17k lead at 18 minutes into the oh, game. Shadow Blade. So just going to look to control up the rest of that map. Make sure they get no space. Try and threaten Envy so he doesn't feel safe pushing outside of the base. And uh, honestly, just eyeing towards that next Roche, even though it's a ways away. Like the next build up there, the Silver Edge, going to help for the Tide Hunter. Try and just guarantee that he can't get off that Ravage. Make sure he stays chained up by Solo. Middle uh, Lincoln Spear now finally complete here for our Queen of Pain. At least five and a half minutes until the next Roshan. If VP want to be safe about this game, they'll wait for it. There is a DD bottled up for the Queen of Pain. Maybe that will signal their go time. Maybe they wait for the, the wards from the Shadow Shaman. There's a number of things you can do here if you're VP, but for now it's going to be back up in, backing up and farming and just controlling the map as best as possible. Look how farmed Lil is. Uh, he's up above any of the Dire Heroes on a Night Stalker. Yeah, he's huge. I mean, he's a guy crest. that makes that nice, uh, yeah, exactly. The Solar Crest makes it nice and easy, too, uh, for the next Roche. Plus, he can harass down NV2 during these fights just by, like, throwing out the Mischance, throwing out the Solar Crest uh, on top of him, too. NV yeah. has been pretty quiet this game. He just not, he's not had the room to farm to get the gold he needs. He is at 6K, which, again, we just talked about it below the Night Stalker. He is only a Yasha and a Kila. So even with meta, his damage is still probably not there in comparison to some of these heroes. Especially with sustain from Ramses on the Necrophos with Death Pulse. Oh man, this will be one of the crazier games I have to say. We have eclipsed the 1k. It was just at 20k for a moment there, yeah. and that's the one that's almost never came back from. Uh, I think there's like very, very few games, but... 1k a minute. Uh, if there's ever a chance, DJ, although it's a bit later, he does have the goal for the Blink Dagger now. So yeah, he just bought it. These are some squishy heroes, right? They haven't gone for any sort of BKBs. You got a Nature's Prophet, you got a Queen of Pain, you got a Necrophos. Realistically, there is a chance with all this high magic damage they do have from the Dire Side that they could bring people down. Maybe Envy can terrorize himself through a fight and actually dish out enough of it. I mean, maybe if you get, like you mentioned, the Blink Echo Slam and you follow it up with a you walk in and you just Ravage, there well, might be enough damage there to actually do something. I think the problem is you can't win a fight with all three ulties. If you win a fight with all three ulties, they're just going to come right back down mid and take your rack. You'll have nothing. So you have to try and space them out. Uh, and that's just the exceptionally difficult part here for Fnatic. And they, oh, look at this vision inside the base, too. Yeah. If they try and make a smoke play outside, they're going to be spotted. And that's kind of something just like crush the, the resistance you're trying to keep. It feels like a catch-22 trim where they like they need a lot of these ultimates to be actually able to get kills and to stay in the game. And, but if they use them like you mentioned, then the game might just end because they can just push. So, And there's not really that nice ulti that you can like bait out either. I guess the best thing would be snakes, but uh, obviously they're pretty difficult to deal with and they leave you vulnerable to follow up stuff while you're trying to kill them. Maybe if you can bait out a Scythe and someone manages to survive, that could be a pretty big one where you could actually fight back. But DJ top, there's nice a slam. slam. Tons of damage. Yeah, Nature's Prophet. So that's one ultimate down, but they secure the kill. No Nature's Prophet for 50 seconds, and they need about a billion more of those kills in order for them to even get close to getting back into the game. But it is a brief respite here for Fnatic with that now of getting the kill. Yeah, and they know that Roche won't come back in that time frame. Uh, so that's an okay time to use your slam. You know they're not going to come high ground, or at least it's very unlikely, I think, without having that next Aegis. So it's a good way to try and uh, whittle your way into this lead just by grabbing a pick like that and give a lot of space over to Envy to farm up top. They are posturing mid, but not everybody's here. They don't have the Night Stalker. Nature's Prophet's back up in 20. Um, yeah, they're just going to wait. And if, oh Man, Solo's going Aghanim Scepter. He is feeling very good about this game right now, let me tell you. Doesn't want to run into the same problems uh, with the pushing last game. Yeah. I'm just able to focus on that Pugna so many times and take away their opportunity there. All right, Virtus Pro. Slowing things down here again. Roshan, two minutes now until it will respawn at the very least. And with that, maybe we'll see a movement being made towards the Roshan and then maybe to the high ground. For now, Fnatic will get some room to move out of the base into the mid lane. And we will try to finish off the Fanta style, his first big item. Excalibur working on his Aghanim set three, his hood, drum, and medallion, a lot of early game centric items, but might be enough to keep him alive and get him some kills. So Fnatic are down 21k. An absurd number, Why but they, uh, they still have some work to be done. They still need to breach this high ground, which might take some time. Yeah, it looks like Ramsey's getting a soul booster here to kind of prop up 
his mana or HP? Will he purchase himself a Bloodstone or an Octarine? Find out soon. Probably an Octarine, but hey, you never know. It's a nice little early game snowballing thing. But Ramses can pretty much buy whatever he oh, wants. Pilot Eye, this is a familiar scenario. Why are you always in the trees? Orchid coming out, he's gonna get sprouted. He will get the arc burn off beforehand. Oh, he he won't go down himself. to the soul burn. <laughs> the TP, he might actually make it out. Nice TP from Pilot Eye. Really good arc burn attack. there, but yeah, the, yeah. the, the self block. He's gotta try and find the vision, so not really much else you can do there as Pasha. Alright. Pilot Eye will avoid the gank. Only five kills for Fnatic in this entire game. And net worth graph was not once ever in favor of Fnatic. It was always going straight up essentially for Virtus Pro. They had a really great laning phase. Excalibur had a kind of a rough start in the mid lane, got behind, got behind the levels. And uh, Ohio just has not had the same impact that he had in that first game. I think they were talking about it on the panel. They mentioned how pretty much in the first game, Ohio kind of kept them in it. The clockwork, the hook shots, those kind of things. It's not the same this time around. He's had like one Ravage on the solo, getting a kill. And uh, that's yeah, pretty He just doesn't it. have a hero that can do that stuff this game, right? You can't make these early rotations and have big impact and stuff. Tidehunter is a, a ball hero who stands there while you get objectives, but he had no other friends, so he can't take objectives by himself. If you have a clockwork, at least you can like enable uh, other people to help get kills and stuff, but uh, with a, such a long CD on the ulti, there's no really um, that option here for Ohio this game. Uh, one of the best things about VP this game, too, is that they have probably the best support in this scenario. I'd say Shadow Shaman and Jakiro may be tied in that situation where two heroes, they can just keep clearing these side lanes, and they know that they feel safe, right? What are they going to do? They're going to smoke into their base and echo slam you. Like, if they do that, that's a victory from you. Uh, but you're keeping this pressure up on them with you com uh, combined up with a Nature's Prophet and a Queen of Pain. There's basically no way for them to get any uh, breathing room. I'm surprised they've even found their way into this tier one down bottom. It looks like it's just VP really not wanting to give any sort of space up around the pit. Yeah, I mean, VP have been in situations where they've been ahead before. They really don't want this to go down by the wayside. They really wanted to get this win. And uh, Pasha was looking to be aggressive, but for now, the Shadow Blade will wear off. Bottom lane, oh, though, yeah. they're chasing onto Ohio and Pile I Die. He's got that Octarine Core, man. He, he might be willing to throw this thing out here. Yeah, no one looking for a target. Here comes the TP from the Nature's Prophet Pasha. He's got the Sprout, he'll use it onto Ohio, but the Glowing <laughs> Blade comes down immediately. Pile I Die going for the TP, but there's the board coming in from Lil. Another kill going the way of Virtus Pro. And he is dead for 30 seconds. Maybe this leads into a high ground scenario. You have Serpent Wards, VP, we'll see. That guy's level 10. I, I don't know if I'm really willing to posture myself here. It's a bit risky, I think, just how fast he can come back. Yeah. You don't want to get into a long dragged out fight. You know, this Ravage pops up. That's a little bit more time, but they're going for it. They're throwing the snakes down. They're gonna Goal the here is Tier wards. 3. Yeah, they just want the Tier 3 back into Shrine. Maybe if they can find something else, if they overextend somehow on Fnatic side and get a kill or two. They can get more out of this. But for now, Fnatic will clear out the Serpent Wards. In fact, they're not even really going to commit to the Tier 3 Tower. They're going to drop Serpent Wards. They're going to get cleaned up, and they're going to back away for Virtus Pro because it's also daytime now, too. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, definitely not worth in that scenario. And uh, there we go. A little bit of defensive capability here picked up as Pasha will find himself a PKB. And uh, similar defensive options coming here for no one. As he's just waiting on a Shiva's Guard to be completed here at the Secret Shop. Pasha doing the uh, most valuable thing he can right now, sit in the Roche Pit. Yeah, he's just going to Do a wait. dance. All right, perfect. 45 seconds. This is the type of game to dance for if you're Pasha. It's the type of lead. You know, he could make a tree in. You know, you don't have to be here right now. <laughs> I'm not yeah. so sure. He's super confident it's about to spawn. He's doing that little countdown, you know, three, two, one. And then just over and over. But not it's, it's not working. 30 seconds is close, but no cigar. They will spot DJ, who's on top of a ward currently. They'll try to chase him down. They thought about TP with the Nature's Prophet, decided against it. Ramses is gushed mid, and some snakes are there. Or rather, I'm um, serpent. What are these things? Birds. They are birds. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm losing out on my, uh, my animals here. They're, they're not going to be able to do anything, though. At this point, it's just waiting. <laughs> waiting for Virtus Pro. They do find yeah. themselves outside of vision. They're trying to make a play here during actual daytime. Yeah, they got to Oh, look who happen. it is. He's actually there. No one would be a huge target or Roshan, either of which they could go for. They'll look That's for no one. That's so risky. All right, he's TPing out. See ya. I mean, they could cover themselves with Curse and Ravage, and they have the damage from Envy, and they don't really have the best AOE kind of stuff. We, we have kind of went over that here. That's a that's a hex play. Yeah, get rid of that illusion there. Solo. All right, so both teams know that Roshan's out. I would assume at this point, Virtus Pro knows something is going on because the illusion was in Rosh. There's nobody like dealing with bottom other than Ohio. Oh, they see Solo here with this board they have. All right. 
Wow, he's actually really close. They want to stay really spread. All right, put the snakes down. We've got to watch out for that witness, Chris. Got to watch out for DJ. Deal with that illusion real quick. I'm, this thing is falling pretty fast. Oh, yeah, he's so close to the Hexon Lil, too. You really wish you had it right about now. Courier will oh, fall again. It? All right, nice. Pasha just making sure. He finds the Tidehunter, too, so he knows he's not down near the pit right now. All right, Roche is still low. The Serpent Ward's still up and going. They've got the Solar Crest. Roche getting lower and lower. Pasha coming in. Ramses is doing this alone, pretty much. Really just trying to make sure they take this without losing anything in the process. Envy's keeping home, and Fnatic have given up on contesting this. There's no way. Yeah, they're just too far ahead right now in terms of these cores. If someone can just solo Roche like that with the help of the wards and the Treants tanking it, then you can't find a good curse. You can't find a good echo. You can't force them into a, a, this bad positioning. So they're going to have to try their luck on the high ground instead. They don't want to waste any of their ultis going for any sort of risky play. And they go back to familiar ground up high. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there They're it is. The Aghanims. This is where it gets the a lot harder. The little Aghanims. So many Aghanims today. This is great. It's the series of the Scepter. All right. We'll see what happens with the Scepter, if he can get something done. He's going to go Refresh Orb 2 next. I mean, why not at this point? You're 27k ahead. They're still almost keeping pace with that 1k per minute uh, after all of this. And Envy, he's got 11k net worth. I don't know. They're going to need a big Ravage. There's like... There's three Aghanims on this Virtus Pro team. There's just like Excalibur just got one too. I mean, we're we're all over the place. It's like as many Ags as there were in the last game, pretty much. No, that's that's an overstatement, but still. Well, Fnatic fans, get ready. Start praying. This might be that big defense. Yeah, they need something here. I don't know what, but they need something. And uh, this oh, vision Ohio's is just race. so strong right now. Aghanim scepter for a little. There's the Ravage coming out. Ohio will lead the way. So spread, Echo though. Slam. They've got it on Ramses. He has cheese to work with. He's still alive for now. He's going to get dropped down. They blow him away. The familiar stuns were able to keep him locked down long enough that it's it, but they use so many ultimates there. They're going to lose DJ. Ohio might be next if he's not careful. And he will pop the meta at this point in time. In the meanwhile, bottom lane solo is just working on these racks. He's already taken the tier 3 tower down. He might lose his left Excalibur. I don't think he really cares. Here comes the Nature's Prophet. In fact, they're going to turn. The Ghost Scepter comes out from Solo, and Excalibur is dead in the meantime. Back up top lane, no one going on to Ohio. They're going to get the dire bottom range racks. Ohio is still in trouble top lane with the Shiva's Guard. Lil going to work. He's just backstroking it up. There's not much he can do at this point. No Ravage available. No Echo Slam available. DJ, uh, he's down for 15. You don't have Excalibur for 30. Meta's about to be down for NV at this point. Ramses is back up in 30 seconds, and uh, I don't know what you do. You're going to lose racks bottom. And it's, the, it's more than the beginning of the end at this point for Fnatic. It that just feels rough. This is kind of stuff that just puts VP on that next level in terms of teams. I mean, it shows why they're way up there right now. This is the kind of thing that usually happens as well. Pasha, he might escape here. Uh, uh, he will Chris comes out. He will go down, but the damage has been done. One oh, racks down oh, now, and Fnatic, rock. they're fighting to the bitter end at this point. Down 28k. It usually takes until after team gets wiped once before they make that play, where they start focusing most heroes up top, and then you try and force in some ultimates, and then start the split push. But right away, they kind of see that as um, obviously the classic counter to big wombo combo is just stay spread or split push. Gaia's Don't ever give them that big team fight that they attack. want. So excellently done here. Great itemization with the scepter. And uh, I mean, you have to give credit to Fnatic though, where they were able to burst down Ramses uh, yeah. before he can get off that cheese. Uh, sadly, it that would have been still really bad it. if they couldn't have got if they didn't get him. Ohio in the meantime is still getting chased down. He it's still doesn't have Ravage for 35. Too, so they really can't fight into BP. And look where they're fighting. I mean, it's almost tempting to jump here if you're on the Radiant because they're way outside their base. And you know some of these spells are still on cooldown, whereas now when they push in here, Ravage will be back here just momentarily. And they're trying to keep these creeps out. Maybe yeah. uh, try and force back that back door, but they are going to get close enough here. They're doing everything they can to make sure... Bottom lane, this solo, grabbed down. up here by the Shaker. Yeah, he's in trouble. The Ghost Scepter, he has a haste rune for a bit, <laughs> and he might actually make it out. He's just gone. That's got to be frustrating. That's your... Uh, Ross is able to get away from those heroes. That's very unfortunate for Fnatic. Now a gem picked up for the Night Stalker. They have all the map control in the world that they need. They don't have wards yet other than... One over here towards the top uh, rune spot, but one elsewhere. I don't know, man. I just... <laughs> do, you, do you think there's a chance that no. he, he gets this refresher and then he gets the shard? Oh. And we get three sets nice. of snakes. Yeah, um... that, that's a big mana pool, guys. <laughs> I don't think he, he's going to have to keep that thing at level two if he ever wants to dream of that. 
I right. mean, there's a possibility. No, uh, it does seem like we'll probably end up getting to the next Roche, though. Um, the age is expiring here in just another 30 seconds. All right, they'll finally take down the Shrines for Virtus Pro, get some extra gold going their way. Slow and painful death Gaia's for Fnatic at this point, but maybe they can get one big fight that ravaged the, the Echo Slam that we talked about. Maybe somehow VP don't stay spread. Something can happen here. Desolator's going to be the next item for Pasha, which is huge because they need maybe some extra pushing potential just to finish off these towers quicker. And Lil just continues Gaia's to walk around D Ward with the Gem of True Sight. Make sure they can get any advantage they can. Roche up in three minutes. The Aegis is about to go. They'll find a, an Orchid up onto Ohio. Good cold embrace coming out. The Glimmer Cape as well, and somehow Ohio stays live. Even the Sonic Wave coming in. Echo Slam, they'll find the Queen of Pain. The Ravage will come out, and they've already lost the Aegis, and so now no one will fall dead for 76 seconds. They'll turn on Dalil. That's a huge winner's curse. He looks like he'll drop two. Ramses pops the Ghost Shroud in the meantime. Envy trying to chase him down. Good force oh, behind ground, ground, though. They know. And they've got the Familiars to chase him down. He's in trouble. He can't move further. They're going to bring him down as well, and that's three dead for Virtus Pro. Excalibur will get a double kill. In the meantime, mid, the TP will be successful coming in from the Nature Prophet. He will get the Tier 3 tower. They did lose three heroes in the process, and that gave Fnatic 5,000 gold yeah. for those three heroes. Lil's gem as well. Maybe the worst time to take a fight like that. Very well executed from Fnatic to find that as the Aegis was just expiring. I think it was like 10 seconds gone once he died. Yeah, it was uh, it literally expired at the beginning of that engagement. So Yeah, they were, they were definitely timing that one inside of Fnatic and able to capitalize on that. So we start getting ourselves down that lead. All right. I mean, they've been playing so cautiously here from VP. I mean, just insanely slowly, waiting on these Roches, trying to create these split push opportunities by pressuring near the base. And they've been largely successful. I mean, you look at this net worth. They have just so much gold over the side of the dire. You're looking at heroes on the chart. It's crazy. You got three heroes up there, then three heroes down there. So we're talking like 2K. We got, we got a 4K spread going between Visage and Profit. Ohio. Looks like he should be fine. He's able to get forced away at the end. And Lil's going to try to chase him down Hunter in the night coming out. There's the Void. Good vision coming in. The Crippling Fear as well. He's going to get Hex once more. Shackles back up, ready to go. Shiva's Guard jumping in, looking for Pilai Dai. He'll go for the TP himself as he's orchided up. Still Ohio getting chased down. He's so damn tanky, but the Sunder will come in from Envy. He'll BKB TP. Should be able to get out. Nice play from Envy to make sure Ohio stays alive. No Ravage for 45 seconds. Four Staff still ready. Lincoln Sphere is broken. They commit a lot there for Virtus Pro, including the wards, to try to get that kill, but they're not able to do so. But, uh, huh. well. It's actually the uh, Radiant Courier they'll go down this time. So Ramsey's not going to be able to have his AC anytime soon. So he was just about finished up here as he's working on that Hyperstone. They finally get some revenge there. Virtus Pro still putting the pressure on. It is daytime. Roshan, 39 seconds until it may respawn. And, uh,. Things have slowed down considerably the past, like, 10, 15 minutes. There's that 600 night vision you talked about for Pilot, although it's a, it a bit late. It happened. <laughs> it's a bit late. We got in there. The counter, it's solved here, guys. This is, this is the turnaround potential. It's all uphill from here. <laughs> it's, it's true, actually. It is all uphill, getting into those, uh, those racks in the 2 through tower. But... We'll Deso see. will be next here for Posh. I mean, Deso, AC, they're starting to focus the structures. So once that refresher is done as well for Solo. Where are the Meteor you Hammers got a question and Necronomicons at this, this point? Helm and, of the and Dominators. That's the next round. We'll have five Meteor Hammers, a bunch of Necros, and we'll just start throwing everything at the base here. Uh, you need it. You're having some tough times breaching high ground other than the bottom lane, which is taken with Serpent Wards. Uh, maybe the refresher from the Shadow Shaman, he's actually super what close, which is the crazy thing. Yeah, and now he's going to get it. I mean, they're, they're going to give him the time. There's no way you push without it at this point. He's I so mean, close. If you could just focus their efforts elsewhere, you just drop double wards with Aghanims, you're just going to take a set of racks as long as there's nobody there to defend. Like, actually got a uh, relatively late spawn, too, there. It's still 145 away. Yeah. Virtus Pro are being super methodical about this game. And yeah, they lost a fight, if you want to call it that, just a couple minutes ago. But again, you know, they were like sitting at 28k when they lost that fight, and then they went down to 25k, and back up to 28k. You have so much room to, to farm. You have the entire map to work with if you're Virtus Pro. And uh, there's no reason for them not to farm the map when they're not pushing in here. So. All right. I'm just excited for double snakes. It's coming soon. Does he have it yet? Yeah, he's about to. Just clean up a couple camps. He needs one more camp to work with, and then he'll have it. Or to sell his wand. 
and no one's going to have his own Octarine core here. Whereas Envy will find his way into another Scotty. So two games in a row. Yeah, but is it going to be enough? He's pretty tanky now, actually. The damage is pretty good. They really need to rely on some of these ultimates, though, from Fnatic again. It's just... I'm surprised. Do you think Ohio maybe should have figured him out about getting a Blink Tagger, perhaps, on this hero? The Tidehunter? Uh, he has the four staff, so I think that's enough. It's a little bit more versatile, too, depending on who's being gone on. Helps him against the Sprouts. So, overall, um, the better choice. I think you can't invest too much in mobility. You obviously, you need that tank ability to be relevant in the game and make sure you can get off that Ravage at uh, the best possible time. Uh, not just, like, because he needs a tank damage, too, right? I don't think he can afford to hand that off to anyone else on his team. Yeah, true. He has been, Ohio has been very tanky this game. Like, they have had a lot of trouble killing him. Uh, yeah, he also probably has the least important of the ultimates, honestly. Uh, it's more about the Echo Slam, the Winner's Curse. And if he can set those up just by being focused by a bunch of heroes, not necessarily ravaging, that should be fine. Uh, speaking of uh, the big focusing, Echo, Slam Echo Slam comes out. He's going to BKB and Shadowblade out. They'll dust him. Sprout comes in. He'll go for the TP and Chance out him. And he's gone. No way to cancel that TP. So the BKB coming in. They didn't have the familiars in place in order to actually... Uh, disable him, so he's fine. Lil will go for Excalibur. They're gonna have another TP in coming for the Queen of Pain. He's trying to bring down the creep, couldn't do so in time, and that means Excalibur will fall. Desolator from Pasha. There's the Reapers coming out. They really wanted to make sure they got that on him. Down for 100 seconds, he will have buyback. But uh, at this point, they're jumping into base. No one. Lincoln Sphere is broken. Sonic Wave coming in, heading on to two. The Guardian Greaves will fly. No one. Blinking in further, the reflection will follow him. The birds are coming, they're looking. They're trying to find him, no one's just gonna walk straight out. The glyph is gone. Serpent wards have dropped mid lane. It's the double wards, and they're about to bring down the racks. At the very least, the range racks will fall. Melee taking a lot of damage and almost going down as well. Excuse me, range almost going down. And, uh, Successful like refresher snakes, I think. Yep, that's yeah. it. That's all they needed to do. Just focus the attention somewhere else. Solo just comes in, drops refresher snakes, and that's it. The full set of racks is pretty much gone. And now into Roche. Kind of the perfect storm of bad events there for Fnatic. They can't get the pick off. Uh, you know, back in the olden days, Visage could have maybe had that stone form onto the uh, the Prophet, but she don't happen anymore at the match community. And then they waste the Echo Slam because of that. And then they just go high ground knowing there's one less ultimate. And now they found themselves the Roche as well. Man. All right, who's got it? Uh, this is quite the far cry from game Dude, number one. Dude, he's got it. It's there. The dream is oh, real. Oh, he actually has the refresher shard? <laughs> That's pretty unbelievable. No, All right, now we just have to wait 130 seconds, guys. No, I mean, this way they can just go uh, right now, right? Just go burn it right now yeah, with the refresher still down. Need. Wait the 50 seconds, then go. And uh, at that point, you can just take, take top racks. Oh, no, he's got cheese. Okay. Maybe the dream is real. It, it might actually be possible. <laughs> he's, he, it's good that he didn't buy any other items because he's filling up a lot of slots, these Roche consumables here. <laughs> he just, he's got everything he needs. Look, he, he has to put his ghost up in his backpack, just get a smoke here. Yep. That's going to be a long journey. He'll make it up to the top lane here in a moment. But uh, did they end up bringing the racks down? No, the range racks is still alive in the mid lane, just barely. No wonder this guy won a Mercedes. Yeah, now so, I understand. Solo is ownage this game. Honestly, he's able to get so much from it, get the ghost shot pretty early. Just a great game overall, just from everybody in Virtus Pro. But it's quite the far cry from game one. Very close game. Fnatic were able to take it in a long-winded one where they had Envy Farm up on that. Medusa able to do a lot of work there. But this game, they just were not able to hang in for most of it. And uh, they've only got 10 kills to their name. But surprisingly, Virtus Pro only have 18 at 41 minutes in. So pretty low kill score game it's mostly been about positioning yeah taking buildings that kind of thing it's a very strategical one this time i mean it's um, kind of give credit i mean 41 minutes in 36k lead it's pretty rare to see these massive leads there generally the game just kind of ends you know they you try and make some sort of a big play and perhaps it's something Fnatic could have tried um because at this rate does it really feel like there's any chance for them to win this um if you just sit in your base right like if you're just hoping for that one big play uh feels pretty unlikely so the game is probably a little bit too far gone at this point Maybe you, you wonder, should we try to make a big play? I honestly can't remember seeing a big moment where I was like, okay, maybe now they should try and go for it. So it just felt like the uh, the laning stage disadvantage was just way too much in this one. Yeah, but sure. um, they are going to try one of those plays. They're not going to sit in the base. They're going to try and get something they done here. They have to do something, I think. And they're heading towards bottom. Maybe Pasha's going to reveal himself and then they're going to go on him. They know the treants are here. They have a good feeling, perhaps, that he's down in this bottom lane. Excalibur's a little bit DJ paranoid, just saw him, though. I think. The, the Blink's going to come in. He's going to BKB Pasha. Getting chased down, he's gonna go for the TP. I think he's gone. No, the Winter's Curse comes out. 
And they will be able to get this kill then, because the BKB now down. The Fisher comes out. All right, big pickup. Eight yes, seconds. Yes, top lane. Excalibur was pinging. He was looking. It's solo. Yeah, he has He's a here. Snake rune. one. He has a haste Refresher. Drop that was snake two. There the he goes. Cheese. He pops the cheese. Snake, snake three. three. Oh my god, he actually did it. He actually got the three snakes and he's going to get the top racks within seconds. Not only that, but these little mini buildings, they're all going to fall. It's Megas in the meantime. No one might fall, but he's got Aegis to work with in the meantime. Buyback comes in from the Earthshaker and they've got to do something here. Posh can buy back if he wants to. Echo Slam coming in. They will take down no one. The Queen of Pain dead for 100 seconds, but the damage has been done. Mega Creeps is here and Fnatic are now going to have to deal with even oh, more pain and anguish. Look at gold, though. I mean, this is the downside Envy's going to be rich here. <laughs> Envy and Excalibur are going to get all of this gold. Watch this. Oh, that was beautiful. It happened. I'm glad that it took 43 minutes, and the fact allowed us to watch this pleasure. Look, look <laughs> at it. Don't give up. All right, I'm sorry. Okay, I won't give up on you guys quite yet. Man, DJ it's all Ohio. part of the plan. They've been so positive. Ohio's been backstroking. He's been having a good time. DJ, the don't give up is being spammed. You're up one game. This is the mental fortitude game. This is where you, you force them to drag it out. This is why they haven't gone from that risky play. They're, they're trying to exhaust so you think, their opponents. So you think they're tilting British Pro by doing this? Exactly. They're, they're looking for like an 80-minute game here. They know the game's lost. They're done. They're just going to just chill. 80 minutes or so. See if they can wear down those baggy eyes over there on VP. Yeah, you know, exactly. They're probably a little tired from winning all those games at ESL. <laughs> Take what little bit of them is left. Oh, we won so many rid games. Of We've won so many. It's so We're exhausting. so tired. <laughs> Oh, my Mercedes, it's so comfortable. <laughs> Just falling asleep over here. Oh, man. Man. All right, well, as exhausting as these games might have been, Virtus Pro, they're trying to finish this one off at 44 minutes into the game. And Fnatic, they've got a mountain to climb. I, I mean, it's pretty much an impossible mountain to climb at this point. They'll try to find Excalibur. He's going to get orchided up. The Desolator doing some work. Posh is going to be KB. There's the dust. Do they have the Mortar's Curse? They do. And that'll stop it. He's done this twice now. They're defending. They'll grab another kill. One down, a million to go, essentially. Here comes oh, the Wards drop down. The buyback coming in. Ravage will come through. Hits on pretty much everybody. They really want Solo. They can't quite get him. On the other side, Pile Eye Orchid it up. He will get off the Glimmer Cape in time. There's going to be Ramsey throwing out that Reaper Scythe. They'll get the kill on the Tide Hunter. Forced to buy back. Pile Eye Dies dropped down. Everybody buying back from Fnatic, but at this point, it's too little, too late. They're overrunning the base. Sonic Wave will come through. Pasha does go down in the meantime. Dead for 100 seconds. Lil going toe to toe with Ohio. Ramsey's backing away, trying to heal back up. DJ still has that Echo Slam, looking for a target here. Echo Slam coming in onto two. Fisher following up as well. Lil, they're looking to go on him. They've got the Anchor Smash doing some damage coming in, but no one's still fighting fit. Shiva's Guard at the ready, jumping in, screaming pain aplenty. They're going to grab two kills. The Ancient now under fire from these Mega Creeps. Ohio, Cold Embrace to stay alive for now. Envy is metamorphosis up and trying to fight Ramses. Pops the Ghost Shroud. No one's still, again, fighting. Doing so much damage with these Screams of Pain. Jumping back and forth across the base. It's okay, we got snakes in five seconds. He's got another cheese. Solo's just been walking around. He's just been meandering. He went down to the grocery store. <laughs> He's got the cheese ready to go. Oh, there we go. Finish this up. one off here in and true there it is. Rasta style. And that should be it. They're fighting across the base. They'll kill no one, but at this point, the game is over. Virtus Pro have done it. 45 minutes in, a marathon of a game fanatic. It, uh, it was never really in their grasp to begin with, but uh, Virtus Pro, absolutely masterful play there for the most part. That was one of the saddest games to play a Tidehunter. <laughs> he had just no friends. Like there was, he, he got the gold, but there was nothing he could do. He just felt powerless. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have anyone to actually go with him in those early parts of the game, trying to abuse the fact that, yeah, I'm ready to tank some damage. Is anyone on my team going to do some here? And uh, it was just masterfully played in the first 15, 20 minutes here by Virtus Pro. The game just, it was done, right? Th 13K lead at 13 minutes. Get they, me out. They won pretty much every lane. They had the great rotations from Lil and Pasha. This leads me to the question of what do you think you need to do as Fnatic in terms of the draft next game against Virtus Pro? Is something you, do you want to look at maybe the Nature's Prophet and taking that out or taking out something like the Night Stalker? Because those were the first two picks for, for Virtus Pro. What do you want to try to take away from, from them in this next game? I think when you have someone like Ohio who's just going off on a day like this, I would just try and keep him on heroes that can do something. You know, he, he was not a do something guy this game. Uh, and if, it's, if you want a hero like this again for him, then there definitely need to be more attention for Excalibur, right? He got a little bit shafted.